Hey, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronis from Ronis Photographer, and I'm sorry if at all uh, my voice is not sounding all that good. I'm having some kind of a cold, so I hope you guys bear with me. And it is one of the reasons that's why I haven't been uploading tutorials on this channel for some days. So today we're going to be retouching this image, and uh, it was part of my previous series. And I would like to thank you guys for engaging in the retouching challenges in on the raw images I provided in the last video so you can keep on engaging and practicing more and uh, what I noticed from uh, the retouching of those previous images is uh, most of you guys were missing out on the skin textures so basically most of the images you guys were tagging me in were uh, practically plastic and they are lacking uh, this uh, skin textures so let me show you uh, it was lacking like these textures so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys each and every step, uh, step you have to follow when you're retouching uh, your images so that you can retain as much texture as you can in Photoshop using the amazing frequency separation technique in Photoshop as, us as usual sorry uh, this model is called Jasmine and the link is going to be in the description of this video and I took this image using a Canon 60 camera and a speed light. It was in a softbox and a reflector was just put underneath uh, to create a more dynamic feel of this portrait. So enough of the talking. Let me go in and start learning about the amazing frequency separation technique. And as usual, what is frequency separation? Basically, it is a retouching technique that uh, divides the image into two. That is the high frequency that contains the skin textures and the low frequency that contains the skin tone. So, as you can see this image, uh, the skin textures are usually on top. That's why the, uh, the topmost layer is called the high frequency and the lower layer is called uh, the low frequency because it contains uh, our skin tones and the colors. So, basically, we're going to create these two layers by just dragging and dropping right here. So I'm using an older version of Photoshop. So you may have a plus icon for newer versions right here. So as you can see, you're gonna name this, uh, you're gonna name this uh, low frequency. And at the topmost layer, I'm going to name it high frequency. So for most cases, I'm going to abbreviate that. Uh, in most cases, you, you come across texture or high frequency or low fre uh, low frequency or color or skin tone so you shouldn't get shocked you should know which layers come on top of the other so here we are right now we are going to start by deactivating this uh, high frequency layer and selecting the low frequency layer so what we are going to do we are going to uh, remove textures from this layer because you want to only retain the colors and the skin tone so as you can guess that right what we're going to do we are going to be uh using gaussian blur because we're going to be blurring out or removing skin textures from uh, this layer so that you can remain with the skin tones and the colors for this image so come right here to filter come to blur and come to gaussian blur so I'm going to put this to zero so you have to make sure you look for the area that seems to have uh, more skin textures uh, than the rest of the skin so that you can blur out those textures vividly so just come and uh, start moving this slider as you are looking on the skin textures so just uh, move it so we only want to remove the textures, but you can still notice the facial structures. So that's basically what we are doing. So just move the slider as you're looking at your image. So for this image, we are going to go with the radius of 8. As you can see, we can't see most of it as uh, skin textures, but you can still notice uh, the facial structure so we have only the colors and the skin tones for uh, this very layer so just click ok and now click on your high frequency and now turn it back on by clicking on the eye icon 
I'm sorry I'm taking this tutorial step by step because I don't want you guys to get lost and I want you guys uh, in the raw files I provided last time so that you can redo and practice and get at uh, the most out of your retouching so make sure you select your high frequency so for this high frequency layer we are going to be retaining only the skin textures but we are going to be subtracting the textures from uh, this very layer so what we are going to do right now we're going to come to image and click on apply image so when you click on apply image this is what you get this is going to be like your default so you shouldn't worry about your image turning into this color so remember we're going to be subtracting from uh, the low frequency layer so click on it and now come to the blending options or the blending mode and look for uh, the mode that is going to subtract so like you guessed it right just click on subtract so make sure the scale is 2 and offset 128 and the opacity is 100 percent the reason for this is because uh, we want to get something that is 50 percent gray something between uh the color and black and red so remember 256 divided by 2 you get uh 128 that's the reason as to why we have put in these values so click ok and come to the blending mode right here and look for linear light so when you click on linear light your image is going to be uh come back the way it was so you're going to be grouping these two layers by clicking Control or command and selecting the two layers then you can click Control or command g yeah command g to put them in a group or you can just select them after selecting them and uh, drag and drop them into this group you'll still get this created for you so we're going to name this group uh for purposes of of being uh, smart and unique so we're going to name it frequency separation so we are done creating a frequency separation group so when you turn this on and off uh, you notice that there is no difference between uh, the frequency separation group and the background uh, layer so basically we are done creating a frequency separation group so what we are going to do right now we are going to uh, learn about the mixer brush tool and the importance it uh, and the difference it makes to our images so basically a mixer brush tool for those who have done painting uh, you always have a brush and you try to blend those colors to create uh, a very good painting out of your image so what we're going to do right now just come and select your high frequency layer so remember when you want to create a layer on top of the selected layer make sure it, the layer itself is selected and come to the adjustments right here and click on black and white so when you create this black and white layer on top of the high frequency it uh remember when you're going to be learning about the mixer brush tool it kind of helps us when we are going to uh, blend the unevenness in the skin tones in this image so like when you create your black and white layer for the very first steps you won't be seeing the unevenness in the skin tone so what we're going to do right now come to the red channel and uh, click on this uh, point and just uh, drag it towards your left and uh, in this way you start seeing or not seeing uh, those areas that have some kind of bumpiness uh, in the skin tone so we are going to be using our mixer brush tool and you're going to mix and have a uh, smooth transitions in this uh, very image while retaining uh, the skin textures so that's why we have to use the mixer brush tool when uh, within our frequency separation so if at all you don't have your mixer brush tool under brushes just come right down here and right click and you'll find your mixer brush tool right there so that is our mixer brush tool it is not a normal brush but it is a mixer brush tool so after you have selected it come right here and set your brush with the right values so drop down and make sure it is a clean brush so just drop down it is a clean brush and make sure 
only this is uh, selected. The reason for this is because uh, we want the brush to clean itself after each and every stroke when we are trying to blend or remove these uh, bumpiness uh, in the skin tones and having smooth transitions. You can see the bumpiness right here in the nose area. So make sure the wetness is around 9%. Uh, the load is 75%. The mix at 90% and the flow at 100%. And make sure sample all layers is not checked or selected. So come and select your low frequency layer. Remember, the skin tones or the colors are usually on this fair layer. That's the reason that's why we are selecting uh, the low frequency layer. So we're going to start uh, mixing and uh, blending these uneven skin tones to have smooth transition. So you shouldn't worry if at all you don't uh, totally mix uh some areas because we are going to be sharing uh another method that is going to uh, fine-tune the image at the end of our retouching so stay tuned so that you can learn both methods because when you combine them you get the most perfect results at the end of the day and as you can notice we haven't removed the blemishes yet from uh, this fair image so we're going to zoom in a little bit not too much and you're going to start uh, blending the unevenness in the skin tone. So you're going to start uh, from the nose area. And you can increase or decrease on the brush by using uh, the in and the out brackets. So that's basically the right and the left brackets on your keyboard to increase or decrease uh, the brush. So just a uh, mix. And when you're mixing, make sure you mix the highlights alone, the mid-tones alone, and the shadows alone. So we have some sort of shadows on the nose area so you're going to uh, blend or mix uh, those areas and when you're doing this make sure you don't uh, mix a particular area for so so long because you're going to be doubling the effect of uh, the wetness of the brush so and it may end up uh, flattening our skin textures in this image so that's why you don't have to over blend or mix a particular area unless it has so many harsh bumps that's why uh that's when you have to over blend uh that particular area so i'm sorry if at all i'm going slow because i really want uh to make you guys uh good retouchers at the end of uh this tutorial so that uh, you can uh, as well upgrade your photography and retouching uh, game. So let's turn this off and we see the progress so far with just a few strokes of uh, our brush. So you can see the before and after before after you can see uh, the effect we have just created right on the nose area of, with just a few strokes of uh, the brush. So turn on the black and red and make sure you're still selected on the low frequency layer and just uh blend these particular areas so let's come right here and we blend so we have some sort of highlight here so we're going to blend that alone as you can see and just uh, blend right here below uh, the eye So let's uh, do this. So this tutorial is uh, basically an in-depth. So that I'm just taking it slow. And I want you guys to uh, learn. I hope you're really paying attention. Because uh, when you your attention is kind of uh, divided, you may end up uh, missing out. So I just want uh, to have your attention uh, in this a specific tutorial and it's going to be a life-changing tutorial at, at the end so just give me a few of your minutes and yeah this tutorial won't take an hour of your day or night depending on uh, the time you're watching uh, this specific tutorial and yeah if you're watching and haven't subscribed remember to subscribe so we're going to keep on checking on our progress for this image so Turn off uh, the black and white layer and you can see the before and the after. You can see how 
drastic. Uh, the image has been transformed with just a few brush strokes. So just uh, turn on the black and white layer. And the reason for the black and white is it just guides us and shows us where to mix and where to not uh, blend or mix uh, the skin tone. So make sure you're in your low frequency and just continue uh, mixing and blending uh, those particular areas. So let's do this. Yeah, and I, I promise I just won't forward because I want you guys to understand how it is done. I just don't want you guys to, I just don't want forward anything and you just come back and be like okay so what what did this guy do to this image maybe some people start getting thoughts of maybe i added a particular plugin uh to make the image look better so let's do this and yeah i thank you guys for uh, those that follow me and yeah support my instagram so my personal Instagram is uh, Ronix, yeah, Ronix Mutegechi, and my uh, business Instagram where I post my most of my photography works is uh, at Ronix Photography. So uh, make sure you follow me and yeah, if at all you have any questions about uh, retouching and photography as a whole, uh, you can uh, send me a message on my uh personal instagram because most of the times i tend to it's not that i don't see your, uh, your messages in my business instagram but it kind of bothers me so and i tend to reply faster on my on my personal instagram because i fi i feel like there is uh, something like a personal connection uh, when you uh, send a DM on my personal Instagram. So that's why I tend to reply on time and give feedback where possible and necessary. So let's uh, check on our progress. So you have to keep on checking on your progress so that you uh, don't mess up uh, your image. So let's see the before and after. So this is the before, after, before after you can see how we have gotten rid of uh, this right here and if at all you feel like you're really confident uh working without uh the black and white or our hair player you can as well do away without it so let's uh continue uh blending uh, these areas so it is all about uh what you, uh, your tests and preferences when you're trying to do the mixing and using the mixer brush tool so that's why uh, we have to be careful while doing this so you can see our progress so far the image is just getting transformed and it gets really really nice and better when uh, you do uh, when you do a uh, uh, mix and blend uh, this unevenness in the skin tone. So what we are going to do, we are going to just blend right on the forehead. And yeah, I think this time I need the black and white uh, or hair player. And make sure you mix when this layer is selected. And just continue uh, mixing on the forehead. You can see I have the highlight here and I'm just trying to uh, mix uh, these particular areas. Yeah, I'm sorry, I know it really gets boring uh, watching or doing a, uh, some specific thing for so long. Uh, but I just want you guys to pay attention and uh, learn and uh, improve on your retouching so that uh, you don't have to watch any more uh, retouching tutorials right here on YouTube. So this is going to be like a game changer for you at the end of uh, this specific tutorial. So uh, remember, I'm going to be sharing uh, with you guys uh, one important trick after applying uh, your mixer brush tool. 
and it is going to be uh, a game changer for all uh, you retouching and you would uh, you you would just wish uh, that you knew all about this uh, trick because uh, most people that do uh, these freaking separation tutorials or videos uh, leave out uh, this particular trick I'm going to share with you guys so what you're going to do let's uh, do uh, the mixing on the hands and fingers and plus this area and uh, we can get back soon to the trick I'm going to share with you guys so let's let me do less of the talking and uh, we blend uh, this area because I know most retouchers tend to forget uh, these vital vital areas during the retouching and uh, it, uh, it doesn't uh, generally look nice so let's uh, beautify every part of uh, the image so let's do this and yeah simple reminder don't forget to subscribe I know I rarely remind you guys and uh, most of you just watch and run away so just don't forget to uh, subscribe to this channel because uh, this channel is going to change your photography and retouching at the end of uh, the day so let's do this yeah I think I want to do a tutorial about micro dodge and burn but I just want to first of all uh, perfect my skills because I wouldn't want to uh, mislead you guys so let's uh, check the progress so turn this off so you can see the before and after before after so what we are going to do we are going to delete the black and white layer just select it hold down and just drag it to the trash icon the reason for doing that is uh, because uh, its use has been uh, exploited so we are going to make sure we are still on the low frequency layer so here i'm going to share with you guys uh, the most important trick after using uh, your mixer brush tool so we're going to fine tune this image so just select your lasso tool just uh, right click and get your lasso tool and make sure your feathering is 21 pixels so we're going to now zoom in completely and look for the area that uh, seems to have more skin textures than uh, the rest of uh, the skin so just come and make a selection on uh, only that area and make sure you resist from uh, selecting other areas like the eyebrows and the hair and maybe cloth so come to filter and come to blur and come to gaussian blur so i know most uh, people that do uh, frequency separation only use this technique but you have seen what the mr brush tool has uh, done to this image so remember this is the radius we had initially used for african separation we had uh, eight pixels so make sure you slide this yeah move this slider until you see uh, the best skin texture for your image i think at around 20 around 26 pixels uh we have some sort of a nice skin texture so here i'm going to share with you guys the trick i use uh if at all you don't want to move this slider how you're noticing like this side so this is going to be like a game changer for you so remember we had eight pixels so what i found out is when you do multiply eight eight by three and add two to the value you get as a base skin texture right here so what you're going to do you're going to multiply eight by three that is 24 and add two to the value so whatever value you may have used when you are doing your freaking separation group or maybe when you're playing your action just multiply that uh, radius by three and add two to the value when you reach this uh major step so you're going to multiply eight by three you get 24 then plus two you get uh 26 so just put that and uh, click enter so you're going to apply 
this effect on the rest of the skin of our model so come right in the middle of the eyebrows right click and apply the Gaussian blur so just make sure you make a selection according to the shape and if at all you feel the effect is too much you can just uh, fade or reduce it like I'm going to show you guys so just uh, make such a simple uh, selection, click Gaussian Blur, and if at all you feel the effect is too much on that particular area, you can just right click and click Fade Gaussian Blur, or the option for fading that is going to be Shift Control F, yeah, Shift Control F, and just uh, reduce or turn down the opacity of that effect. So basically, that is how you reduce uh, the effect of uh, the Gaussian blur on a particular area. So let's uh, apply this on the rest of the face as we get uh, closer to uh, removing the blemishes because uh, when you do remove the blemishes, uh, it is more of uh, a game changer for the overall uh, portrait. So let's uh, do this. For this image so I know it is really getting uh, long and uh, it is getting monotonous and boring but I know you just you're willing to uh, learn from this tutorial that's why you're still watching this uh, video so let's uh, do this so basically uh, we are just uh, drawing and making shapes and right clicking and applying uh, the Gaussian blur so let's see our progress so far so you can see the before and after before after so we're going to apply the effect right here on the nose uh, on the side of the nose so just come and apply it on only the side of the nose so right click and apply it and come right this side uh, right click and apply it then if at all you feel like you want to uh, apply the effect on this highlight on the nose you can still do it but with caution so just come right click and apply that effect and as you can see we have lost out on our beautiful highlight on the nose and like i said before we have to fade or reduce on that effect so click Shift Control F and I uh, just turn down or reduce the effect uh, to get back our beautiful highlight on the nose area. So let's apply the effect elsewhere, like right here. You can see how magical this uh, freaking separation techniques when you just combine the two you just get the the most beautiful and amazing results from uh, your retouching so uh, like i said we shouldn't uh, leave out uh, the fingers or the hands because uh, they do determine uh, the results at the end of our retouching and we wouldn't want people to be like uh, this retoucher is just uh, is maybe a careless retoucher so that's why we are really being careful and applying uh, our retouching on uh, all the areas so I think we are done uh, with fine tuning our image so let's see uh, the before and after before after you can see that we have applied and you can see I've avoided applying the effect right here on the eyeshadow because I don't want to mess up uh, with the makeup that was applied on the eyeshadows right above uh, the eyelid. So we're going to be removing uh, the blemishes or the pimples or the skin imperfections. So make sure you select your high frequency. Remember the textures are usually on the high frequency or this topmost layer and we have to select uh, the blemish removal tool that works best for us so just zoom in and 
you can either use uh, the spot healing or the regular healing brush tool or for this case i'm going to be showing you guys uh this is the spot healing so for it it is uh you just click over the blemish to uh, remove it and for the clone stamp uh you just have to automatically sample by yourself manually to get rid of uh, the blemish in a particular area by holding down the alternate or alt yeah hold it down to sample from a clean area hold it down and click on a clean area and just paint over as uh, the blemish you want to remove so alt click and paint over the blemish alt click and paint over the blemish you are trying to get rid of so that's what we are doing right now so you're just cleaning up the image and after this step you're going to be seeing how beautiful uh, this image has uh, turned out to look or to be at the end of uh, this uh, blemish removal process so you have to be really careful while uh, doing this blemish removal because uh, it contributes almost 50% uh, to uh, your overall retouching so you don't have to rush it so just be careful uh, with uh, the blemish or the uh, removal of uh, these uh, skin imperfections or blemishes so and this is like a, re a reminder just don't forget to uh, subscribe if at all you want to learn more about uh, retouching so basically that is what we are doing right now we are learning together because every time i'm sharing with you guys i learn more and i get to practice uh, more about uh with the retouching sorry so let's uh, get rid of these tiny lines on the eye of uh, the model so you can see uh, we are still retaining uh, the textures while removing uh, these blemishes. So I think we have a tiny line right here. So let's try and see at all we can get rid of it. So basically we are sampling from a clean area and painting over the blemishes we are trying to get rid of. So let's uh, get rid of this tiny smile line so let's uh, zoom in all the way and look for every place that has uh, this tiny tiny blemish so remember we are using uh, the clone stamp tool to do the blemish removal and the blemishes are on the high frequency or the texture layer so i am sampling from a clean area by holding down the alternate key and clicking on that clean area and painting over as a blemish so basically that is all i'm doing for uh, this particular step so let's clean up on uh, the lip area so so you have to really be careful so you can see the before and after uh it is time consuming but uh, it contributes more than 50 percent uh to your overall retouching so you shouldn't uh, rush this particular step so i think uh like i said before i'm going to be sharing with you guys uh, another retouching technique and yeah i know it is really time consuming but yeah we have to explore and see the best uh, retouching uh the, uh the best retouching technique rather for our portrait so that we can see which works best for us and when to uh, apply it so that uh, I'm going to be sharing with you guys I think uh, before the year ends because personally I have to also practice because I've never tried it before so I think when I get a retouching tablet I'm going to uh, practice and uh, share uh, share with you guys so that we can uh, explore and be uh, better retouchers so 
please uh, do this because I feel I'm doing so, so, so much of the talking. So I do apologize for uh, my talking, but yeah, I just don't want to keep quiet while I'm removing the blame shift because uh, you guys may feel like um really a boring guy, maybe. So let's just get cleaning up uh, this particular area and get uh, the disk out of uh, this image. You will see the difference uh, that blemish removal really uh, makes uh, to uh, the image. So let's uh, take time and uh, do this because uh, like I said, it contributes more than 50% uh, to uh, the overall image. So that's why we are taking so, so much time on this particular step. So I think this is fine. So I, uh, you have to keep on zooming in and out to see if at all you did a perfect job. Uh, you can see we have uh, cleaned up uh, the face, but we still have our beautiful uh, skin textures. So you can continue uh, cleaning up uh, the image like that. So what we're going to do right now, we are going to uh, click right here and uh, clean up uh, the arm or the hand of our model. So I think this is fine. So we have cleaned up uh, that particular area. So let's uh, zoom out. So let's see the before and after for this image so far. So this is the before, after, before, after. You can see how beautiful the image has uh, been transformed so far with just a few minutes. I, I know I've taken so long retouching so what we're going to do we are going to add shape or dimension to this image and that is uh, we're going to be using uh, the global dodging and burning technique in photoshop so you're going to come right down here and you're going to create a uh, curves adjustment layer so first of all dodging and burning is whereby we enhance the highlights and the shadows for the image remember when you're doing frequency separation it most of the times tends to flatten our images so we have to uh, bring back the shape and dimension using dodging and burning so we're going to first of all brighten so make sure this mask is selected and hide the effect by clicking ctrl or command i to hide that effect so remember when you are brightening i uh, will dodge the highlight so this is going to be our dodge and you're going to come right here Create a second curves adjustments, make a midpoint and darken. And this time around, make sure this is selected. Click Ctrl or Command I, and we're going to name this a uh, burn. So we are going to put these two in a group. Ctrl or Command V after selecting them. So we can name this uh, D and B. So for dodge and burn. So we're going to create uh, a black and white line in between right here and uh, come and select black and white as usual we are going to darken that and now turn off the frequency separation uh, group because we want to see where initially our highlights and shadows were for this image before doing frequency separation get your brush tool make sure the opacity is at 9 and the flow 100 uh, make sure white is on top because you're going to be painting on a black mask because white reveals when you're painting white on black it reveals so uh, we're going to start by dodging click right here on the mask and you're going to dodge every place that was initially highlighted so we have a highlight right here so we're just going to paint over those particular areas so we can come to the lip and we can enhance that area. Let's come to our highlight right here and just enhance it. 
So remember these hands were kind of uh, dark, especially right here. So we can just come and paint over to uh, brighten them up a little bit. So let's also dodge right here because we just want to uh, brighten these particular areas to uh, sort of match with the face of our model. So let's also brighten up these areas. So I think we are done with our dodging. Get our burn. Make sure it is the same opacity. And now we are going to... Uh, and when you're doing this, uh, guys, remember, don't zoom in completely. So you're going to darken or enhance the shadows. So just paint over uh, those areas that initially had uh, shadows. So don't come on the nose area right here. And we are going to uh, enhance uh, these shadows. I think that is fine. Turn back your freaking separation uh, group. Turn off this and let's see a before and after. Before, after, before, after. You can see what it has done and the difference it has made to this image. So we're going to delete the black and white layer and close this group. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the eye and teeth whitening for this image. So we're going to create a stamp visible layer on top of all we have done by clicking shift control alt e yeah shift control alternate e on the keyboard and we're going to duplicate that layer by clicking control o, o command j yeah control o command j come to filter and come to camera roll filter so we're going to be using that uh, amazing adjustment brush in photoshop so this is the adjustment brush so when you click on it uh, make sure the temperature is around negative 28 because you're going to be cooling down the colors in the whites of the eyes and make sure I tint is 67 the highlights and whites at 5 and make sure we are going to be desaturating so our uh, saturation is at negative 74 get your zoom tool uh, sorry and zoom into the eyes like this you can see just zoom into the eyes and paint over only the white area by clicking on your adjustment brush and just paint over the white the white so uh, the eye so uh, we are basically doing the eye whitening for this image and if at all you feel it is not enough for your liking you can just call it a little bit more and just uh, do uh, the eye whitening for this image sorry about the background noise so you can enhance that catch light in the eyes. I think this is fine. So you can as well come to the teeth of the model and uh, zoom in. Yeah, and get this hand tool and you can uh, whiten them too. Because this is more of a glamour portrait. So that's why we're kind of going extreme uh with uh the retouching so you shouldn't uh worry so much about what i'm trying to do i think we are done with this so let's zoom out and see our image so if at all you would like to do a little bit of more color grading right here come to camera calibration and you can play around with these sliders you can see uh, what really works best for you. So we're going to go for this kind of look. And you can come to the greens and uh, play around uh, with the greens too. And come to the blue primary and just uh, play around with it. So basing uh, on uh, the look you're trying to go in for. So you can still come and add a little bit of contrast to uh, this beautiful image. I think we are done uh, with this. 
so you can just add a little bit of vibrance finger up is fine so just click okay and you can see the before and after so this is the before after before after it is just subtle and it is not too much so let's see what we have done for this image so uh, this was the image before after before after before after and this tutorial has been about frequency separation and it has been an in-depth tutorial and for those who have been asking how i do export my images so they don't change color when maybe you put them on a website or a different device just come to fill a uh, file sorry export and click export as so it is going to take a while while loading and you shouldn't worry depending on how fast your device is and uh, if at all you haven't subscribed don't forget to subscribe i know this has been a really long tutorial but i just wanted you guys to understand each and every step i go through when i am uh, doing the retouching so uh it is going to bring our image so this is our image so make sure uh, if at all you want to save it as a jpeg file so come right down here and embed this color so make sure these two boxes are checked or marked and click export all and you can save the device uh sorry you can save the image wherever you want it to be saved so this story has been about uh frequency separation in depth if at all you loved it don't forget to subscribe to this channel i'm ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching and i'll see you in yet another retouching tutorial on this channel and stay safe